Hello there, this video is made in collaboration with Synology and I have two important disclaimers. One, the product in this video was provided to us for free. I feel like that's important to mention. And two, the title of this video is a lie. I round it up slightly. It's 960 terabytes. To store our first shoot, which was several videos in a small studio in Oxford, Oh, I saved up for a Mac Pro using the money I made working on film sets in the UK and I bought a 250 gigabyte hard drive which I think at the time had a Firewire 800 connection. Since then we've started using cameras that can shoot more than that in two seconds. The TMX7510 has a 288 gigabyte RAM which it can fill in about two seconds if, you're, if you've cranked it to the max. So as time has gone on, our need for storage has gone up exponentially, especially with these new science cameras. I've made that a lot worse for myself by doing stuff like this. Ooh, straight through. I feel like that egg got shattered more, maybe. Did you notice the part that cost me all of my hard drive space? Shattered more, maybe. It's the speed ramping. Typically, even though a camera may shoot 100 gigabytes in a second, I don't want the full second because the event is so short, it may have only lasted for, say, two milliseconds. However, I've always liked speed ramping in that it provides context for the rest of the shot. So I will often start at normal speed, ramp down to that lovely bit of slow-mo and then ramp back up, keeping all the destruction afterwards. The stuff afterwards, I, I feel like is definitely important for the shot. Otherwise, you don't really see the extent of the damage. If I just kept this bit, the fire wouldn't actually be that big. It may shoot 100 gigs in one second, but if I'm only saving two milliseconds or a few microseconds of something, that's still a small file. It's all of the sped up to real time stuff that is costing me all of this hard drive space. Because even though I play it sped up, I have to save every frame of that. I can watch all of my sped up bits as slowly as they occurred. So if you see a full clip, say bullet coming in, slow down, explosion, the raw file of that might be several hours long. However, I do need all those frames to be able to perform these speed ramps. And for a video with a lot of attempts, you're saving multiple files of the same thing. And you might think, well, just save the complete file once and then save the, just the bit you want every other time. But the problem is you don't know which shot will be the best one. So in summary, I've done this to myself, but I do think the end product has been better because of that, even though it's been extremely costly up until this point. Let me show you around our new server. Synology have supplied us with the HD 6500. It's me, I've got a knife. Which is a large storage server with 60 bays, each containing a 16 terabyte hard drive for a grand total of 960 terabytes of raw storage data. The first thing I did was install the components, which were 192 gigs of RAM and two SFP28 cards. This is a very beefy system based around redundancy. So because of that, I have two SFP28 cards and two power supplies in case of failure of either. Each SFP28 port will give me a connection speed of up to 25 gigabits per second. And to run the system and contain the OS, we have two SSDs. With both of these power supplies connected at all times, if one of them fails or has a problem, the power will remain on as it fails over to the second power supply and it will beep an alarm letting me know there's a problem with the first one. Next up is the main event, installing all 60 hard drives, which to be honest was incredibly therapeutic. Synology also sell expansion units very similar in size to the HD 6500, and you can connect up to four of those for a grand total of 4.8 petabytes of data. Once I powered on the server for the first time, I immediately learned two things. One, the fans are very loud, so I'll definitely be tucking this into a sound dampened enclosure. And two, the power draw completely overloaded my UPS, which to be honest, I've never seen happen before. But it makes sense when you think about it, this thing is spinning all these fans as well as 60 hard drives. That takes a lot of power. This thing does not mess around. So I will be getting a more robust UPS very handily straight out of the box. It has 10 gigabit ethernet, which is very nice. So I'm gonna be using that to set up the system and install DSM, which is the operating system for the Synology. Connectivity wise, the HD 6500 uses SMB and other popular file transfer protocols, which means both my Mac and my PC can be connected to it simultaneously, copying files to it, reading files from it, even editing from it without any network bottlenecks, thanks to the option to have a 25 gigabit SFP28 connection. In its final resting position, 
it will live in this sound dampened server cabinet which has a tremendous effect on the noise. My PC, my Mac and my other servers are connected through 10 gigabit ethernet to this switch which in turn is connected to the HD6500 through the SFP28 ports with link aggregation on to hopefully minimize bottlenecks between the HD6500 itself and the 10 gigabit network switch. The Phantoms record in a raw format called .cine files, which is basically a container for all the individual still images that you took. If you were shooting at 90,000 frames a second and you filmed for a second, your container would have 90,000 different images. And it's important in its raw format because it contains all of the color information as metadata, which can be interpreted slightly differently depending on which software you use. For example, the Phantom software itself sees the footage differently to how DaVinci Resolve sees it, for example. So as time goes on, software is able to better interpolate color from those raw files. Secondly, from the raw file, you can very easily export different frame rate videos. For example, all of our videos on this channel have been PAL, 25 frames a second or 50 frames a second. However, if an American TV company wants to license some footage from us, chances are that's at 30 frames a second. So for that, I can find the raw file and spit out a nice new 30 frames a second video. So it's very useful to have the raws to go back to whenever I need to show an old video or provide that video to someone else. You may remember that when Linus gave me our previous storage server and that was able to store most of my raw files up to that point, not including any of the real time footage, not including any of the YouTube originals, but it was something that allowed me for the very first time to put the majority of my raw files in the same place. So that removed the difficulty of me having to look through all my old drives. Obviously it did become filled very quickly and I was never able to add anything more to it beyond that. However, I will keep that server around and online as an additional layer of backup because even though this is RAID and has redundancy, it's not really a backup if something happens to this unit, if it erupts into flames, the, the RAID won't help me. So it is always good to have a backup of the RAID, which is why I now have the LTO system that I talked about previously and I will be keeping this old server. So here's where the Synology HD6500 changes everything about this situation. I can make a gigantic storage pool and have a folder called Slow Mo Guys and everything can be in it. All of my cine files, all of my regular speed stuff from all the various cameras we've used over the years, all the audio, all the sound effects, all the graphics, everything can be in the same place. So if ever I have to go back to an old video, I know exactly where it is. And not only that, I can keep all of my hugely inefficient transcodes, all of my bloated Final Cut project files, and hopefully everything can sit there in the same place for many years to come, or at least until these cameras start hitting a terabyte a second and then I might be in trouble. However, as I mentioned before, another great feature of this storage server, it's very easily expandable with additional units and you can just add to what you've got. The huge storage array is set to RAID 6, so we have two parity drives, which potentially means that if a drive fails and we have to rebuild the array, another one can fail while that's happening and we still won't lose data. So hopefully I won't ever lose any files. I haven't up to this point. Touch wood, why did I say that? What a fool I am. Hopefully that will continue. <laughs> Synology also offer backup services themselves, such as Hyper Backup, which would allow me to back up folders from this server to other destinations such as the cloud or even the old LTT server. And there we have it. I can't quite describe the level of relief I'm now feeling that this storage server is implemented for the very first time since I started this channel in my early 20s. I no longer have to worry about storage space, which just feels absolutely phenomenal. Huge thanks to Synology for agreeing to work with us on this one and supplying some very needed hardware. If you're running a small business or for some reason at home you've just got more files than me, make sure you check out the Synology HD6500 as well as the rest of the lineup. There's different capacity enclosures for almost every data scenario. So no matter how much data you have, there's almost certainly a Synology solution for you. I would love to know if you've got more data than me. I'm sure there are people out there who do. I just, I just would love to know why. Because <laughs> uh, I do feel like my situation is pretty unique considering we haven't actually shot that many videos in comparison to other YouTube channels. Anyway, thank you very much for watching that long video about me storing files. Uh, make sure you subscribe to the main channel, subscribe to this one if you like this kind of thing, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.